Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV. In this week's episode, we're going to discuss what I got for my next vehicle having sold my Jeep. So stick around. Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV. I'm Dino, your host. Glad to see you here. Having sold my Jeep, I am now presented with a clean slate on which to decide what would be my next vehicle. What vehicle would best meet my needs? Are there things I no longer wish to do with my vehicle? Are there things I'd like to keep doing? Or are there things I'd like to start doing for some future adventures? Serious off-roading. Now that took about 1% of the kilometers that I put on my Jeep. And to be honest, as much as I enjoyed doing those serious off-roading adventures, it wasn't really something that I chose to do an awful lot. And although my Jeep was immensely capable of those serious off-roading adventures, it did suffer some drawbacks to achieve that off-road prowess. So if serious off-roading isn't going to be on my agenda, I could perhaps look for a different type of vehicle than a Jeep Wrangler and avoid some of the drawbacks of having such a vehicle. But I have to admit, they do look great. Overlanding and camping, that would represent about 9% of the kilometers that I put on my vehicle. And although I spent a lot of time doing overlanding and camping, they were a lot of fun to do in the Jeep Wrangler, but those activities can be done in a different kind of vehicle that could afford better fuel economy, comfort, and space. But to be honest, those vehicles still don't look as good as a Jeep. And of course, daily driving, that represents about 90% of the kilometers that I put on my vehicle. The lion's share of my driving was to get me from point A to point B, to head up north, go to the cottage, and just to achieve your basic domestic tasks. So it's in this category where I do spend the most time and kilometers in my vehicle, and so fuel efficiency, space, and comfort do carry a lot of weight. So given all of this, what kind of vehicle would best suit my needs and equip me to go out and enjoy some adventures and future journeys. So, as hinted in last week's video, I know I'm gonna miss the Jeep, but I'm also looking forward to the journeys ahead. Hmm. Okay. Cheaper Journey TV? So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a low mileage, one owner, always maintained at the dealership, never been in an accident, a Dodge Journey, a cheaper journey adventure vehicle. <laughs> no, just kidding. Maybe this? Okay, in all seriousness, in my search to find a suitable vehicle to meet my needs, I did go online and look around. I noted how some people enjoyed adventures in Subaru Crosstrex, Subaru Outbacks, RAV4s, Honda Passports, Jeep Wranglers, Toyota 4Runners, Honda Ridgelines, Nissan Frontiers, Toyota Tacomas, Ford F-150s, and the list goes on. Although the list is in no way all-inclusive and complete, the first few vehicles in my list can be categorized as SUVs with varying degrees of off-road prowess and then the second half of the list are essentially some pickup trucks of different sizes payloads and off-road prowess. There's a lot of channels out there of YouTubers using all of these vehicles and enjoying some adventures. So it's not our place to judge if they're out there enjoying nature and having fun, more power to them. At least they're out there enjoying some adventures and we can watch their videos and share in the adventures or in the very least we can maybe learn from them as well. So from my earlier discussion, vehicles with serious off-road capability carry some drawbacks that don't support my vehicle needs about 99% of my time. 
and kilometers driven. So vehicles that provided some good measure of fuel economy, comfort and space would be more desirable. Given I still have plans to do more overlanding and camping adventures, most of the other vehicles on this list can be utilized. They all have pros and cons, likes and dislikes, but whichever I pick, it will contribute to what adventures are in store on the journeys ahead. So I picked a 2019 Honda Ridgeline Touring, and let me explain why. The Honda Ridgeline that I found had low kilometers. It was just owned by one person who had it regularly maintained at the dealership. There were no accidents. So in essence, it was like a newish vehicle. And most importantly, within my budget, it's going to have decent fuel efficiency. It'll be comfortable to drive and it'll have lots of space for camping and adventure gear. It has a 1500 pound payload, a 5000 pound towing capacity and essentially is going to meet all of my adventure needs. I'm not planning to do serious off-roading, so that's not an issue. Of course, I do wish it had a little bit more ground clearance, so I'm just gonna have to be careful on the forestry roads on which I will be doing some overlanding. This vehicle is going to offer some extra possibilities that I didn't have before. Let's have a look at what I mean. Here's some thoughts to some future potential projects. For example, I may want to do a DIY truck bed rack. On that rack, I could put, for example, a rooftop tent, or I could carry some traction mats or other kind of gear when I'm overlanding or camping. So it's gonna give me lots of space for things like that. And that's just on the rack. And then I was considering maybe making the rack modular where I could change its size and maybe even slap on some panels when I wish to have the rack enclosed so it forms a bit of a truck cap. But just because I'm having fun with this idea, I'm also thinking wouldn't it be great to be able to put on top of that a sleeping platform or a pop-up tent or hard-sided camper. Now these are just ideas that I'm toying with and I'm going online looking at some other ideas as well and looking at what some of the construction materials and options might be. But here's a simpler idea where I just make a truck cap out of foam and if I wanted to sleep or camp in it, of course the bed is a short bed so to make it a little bit longer I'm considering having a slide out portion which would allow me to use the truck cap as a sleeping area and it'll provide ample length. And in this configuration, you'll see that there's no drag on the vehicle whatsoever. It sits in the back of the bed and basically has very minimal effect on the performance of the Ridgeline. And in terms of structural integrity, it's just going to be a foam box, maybe hardened with epoxy resin and fiberglass just sitting in the bed. So I kind of like that idea for its simplicity. Now I do have a few other ideas and details in this regard. If you'd like to see a video on that, make sure you put a comment in the description section below this video so I know to include that. Otherwise I could go on forever talking about ideas on things I'd like to do with this vehicle. So I hope that you found that interesting. And one other interesting thing, unlike my Jeep, I did come up with a nickname for the Ridgeline. It's truck just having a little bit of fun until next week be well stay safe take care